Welcome to Random Projects, where I work on random projects and you get to watch me. Uh, today we will be taking a look at this inverter, which happens to be broken. Awesome. Alright, so let's uh, take a stab at fixing this. I think I know what's wrong with it. The uh, power switch was squishy and that wasn't soldered on. So, got hooked up to our power supply, got the current limited to like, I don't know, 600 milliamps, something like that. So it's 0. 0.6 amps. Um, I have a bunch of these, um, I don't know, about 20 of them um, off of eBay. And so, I'm hoping some of them are easily fixable like the uh, the first one out of the box looks like it's gonna be and then the other ones I can probably piece together and uh, make something useful out of some of them uh, there's definitely a few or at least one that's for sure burnt up there's that distinct electronic smell uh, for some people call it ozone um, so some of those are definitely burned up this one looked really clean and neat inside um, I did a visual inspection of the board I didn't see anything burnt up or warm so um, I thought you know, if it was something obvious, like a blown fuse over here, or something like that, those are still intact. Um, and then when I just started to uh, uh, you know, take, a, take a look at stuff, I noticed that the switch was squishy. So let's give it a go. I pulled out a jumper lead here. So we're going to jump the two pins that are normally this, uh, the switch. The switch has got a, you know, sort of a in and out, if you will, or there's a, it, it's designed to break a connection uh, for, for power, so uh, we're going to make that connection for it now because I don't think that it can do it for itself any longer. Uh, you'll probably hear a beep. Yep, there we go. Oh, hold still. There we go. Got it. Um, these are usually like low voltage lines, so, um, uh, or low current lines, so it's not like there's a ton of amperage going through those are they're usually small so you don't have to worry about them shorting out too much but try and keep those if you're working on stuff like that try and keep those from shorting out on stuff so it's now beeped nothing smoked or caught on fire our fuses are still intact power goes back over to here we're pulling a hundred milliamps it's probably what it is just on actually I didn't even Look at that before. What is it when it's off? Oh, off is off. Okay, cool. So, just on doing nothing, this thing pulls 100 milliamps. Just sitting here. And I've connected a um, 110 LED, 110 volt LED lamp. It doesn't pull a lot of current, but uh, let's flick it on and see if this thing catches on fire or not. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, that's probably because we are browning out. Uh, that's a condition that uh, it's not a, not quite a blackout. Uh, it's halfway there, so they call it a brownout. Um, so what we will do is one-handedly, I'll flick that back on, and then we'll increase the current here and see if we can get it to quit doing that. There we go. Oh yeah, it wants one amp. One amp at 12 volts. There it goes. It's on. Sweet. Um, all told, I bought 20 of these for, oh, I don't know, $30. So <laughs> yeah, let's, let's say that was $40. That would be $2 a piece pretty good um, these retail uh, for about you know forty dollars for one uh, so that's a win that's a success uh, if this one can actually um, pull 410 amps as it's advertised uh, this should be a pretty decent little thing and in turn not that it I guess it needs repeating but it pays for the entire lot that I bought for. As soon as, I, as soon as I get a single one up and running, I've made my money back, or at least broken even. So, all right, so the next thing we're gonna do is try and 
put some stress on it. Um, I'll also mention that this uh, little endeavor of dinking with these little inverters um, was inspired by another YouTuber called Neuralnar. I believe that's how you pronounce that. I'll put a link in the bottom. Um, I'm also trying to decide whether I want to put this on my current channel or I'm going to start a new channel that's more like electronics oriented. I don't know. Um, but it looked like, looked like fun. Uh, the guy buys inverters and reviews them or buys broken ones because um, spending retail on something is uh, pretty dumb and then fixes them and then does a review after that or uh, tries to stress them. He's also got a great um, series on um, converting uninter uninterruptible power supplies into inverters like these. Uh, there's you know, some that can be modified very simply with some software um, and then changed a couple components to beef up the amperage and get it going. So um, I'll put a link to that on the bottom. Um, so the next step was to, with this particular inverter, which we got that switch sorted out, actually it still needs to be replaced, um, but for the time being a jumper will do and I'll steal a switch from a non-working unit later and get this one all buttoned up. Um, but I pegged out, when I tried to turn on a, a couple different lamps here, I pegged out my power supply. It's only like three amps or something, maybe two amps. And so I'm going to use this little sealed lead acid that I've got here on my workbench and I'm gonna monitor it here. It's a little low, so it's sitting at 11.2 volts, but um, I don't know, maybe this thing will kick off for low voltage and that'll be another thing we can test the, test the functionality of. I should charge that battery soon. It's part of a solar project that I haven't been um, monitoring very well. <laughs> oh, it's just like it was, supposed to go to another inverter I had out here in the garage and sort of this idea of like being off grid in the garage um, that was part of that project uh, but it's been raining a lot so it got got run down um yeah let's kick this thing on and see what it does actually it's on now uh, the inverter's on so let's not touch the AC side for fear of getting zapped uh, but we'll turn on a lamp oh well, it already doesn't like it why doesn't it like it 10.3 volts that's why it doesn't like it <laughs> That battery's very dead. <laughs> All right, let's see. Maybe I will come back. Let's uh, let me get a bigger battery. A bigger battery. Awesome. Uh, this thing's like I don't know, 30 amp hours or less. Some of you also might notice that those are backwards. That's because these connectors here are not idiot proof. You can get them wrong, especially if you start doing goofy stuff like putting little power meters in them or stringing two alligator clips uh, together that were originally designed to be connected to a charger or something like that. So uh, this is dumb. I should not be doing this. Um, but I, th I think I know what I'm doing. At least I feel like I know what I'm doing. And I don't feel like that until I short those out or pop a fuse or blow a cap or do something embarrassing. So uh, back to trying to power this thing up. Let's see if it browns out this time. No, we're holding rocks solid at 12 and a half volts it's pulling 12 watts which is about right for this little led oh there's, that's also the uh, the inverter there's some loss in the inverter forgot about that uh, and then over my shoulder i will also turn on a 72 watt bulb and see what this thing does oh kicks on the fan it's pulling quite nicely but of course i shouldn't leave it on too long because it's blowing out of the case, and so it's actually just sucking in air right here and going right out and not pulling it across all the electronics like it's designed to do. Uh, so I'll have to button this back up uh, to do any sort of lengthy tests, but that's a, a hundred watts about for a hundred or a 410 watt. Oh, that means I've got quite a ways to go. I've got to get more light bulbs. You know, pull old incandescent light bulbs out of the closet all right, one last thing to mention. Um, as Neuralnar pointed out in one of his videos, the very cheap, crappy, made in China versions of some of these tiny inverters or uh, low quality inverters uh, are not always made the same. Uh, as an example, these are all the same make and model. Uh, they're both, uh, it's hard to read, uh, but they're both X141Bs. I mean, they even have a little 
X141B. I mean, it's not one's an A and one's a B model. These are both X141Bs. But if you'll notice, one is equipped with a USB uh, port as well as two AC port or AC outlets, uh, and the other type does not have it with, without, with, and without. Uh, they all have the same switch type, little LEDs and stuff, and I suspect they're probably going to be very similar on the inside, um, but the, the, with the addition of a little dropped-in um, voltage step-down, probably from 12 uh, volts to 5.5, that'd be the most efficient way to do that. Uh, that's probably what we'll find in these. Uh, I'll make a video of this other model later on, I'll pop it open. Uh, but, also, I noticed a trend for me here. Uh, this, some of these switches work, most do not. Uh, most of them are very squishy, like this one. And there's no, you know, tactile feedback that that switch is working, and I didn't know there's a good chance it's probably just broken. It is broken, I mean, there's no moving to it. And um, there's quite a few of these that have that, so I'm starting to uh, spot a trend here with these uh, having these broken switches. So probably just you know the lowest bidder for this switch uh, was chosen uh, by the contract manufacturer, and they are failing. That's fine because um, I can fix those. So once again, there's a shot of. Uh, about half of these inverters that I've got, so we'll get to tinkering with these and I'll let you know how many turn out.